I'm back at it today. I got the uh, the 2013 Accord that I put the motor mounts on yesterday. So I had to let the customer know yesterday that there was no no fix for what Firestone suggested that he replace. And um, he was understanding, very understanding. Uh, and I did what was requested. So you know, he told me like it's not your fault, and it wasn't. So today we're going to actually go through and see what's actually going on. And um, what I didn't tell, what I didn't say yesterday was the after driving the vehicle, um, I felt a judder. I can say shudder, but it was it was it was a judder, or a mechanical. I had to look that word up because I'm like I've been saying shudder for the longest, but it's still an erratic shake. But the judder is related to more of uh, with the J is related to actual mechanical issues. I'm like, am I saying this right? Because I looked up some information, um, and because I'm like, well, is let's just see if there's any technical service bulletins on this, if there's any issues, and there is um, in regards to the uh, juddering issue. Um, and it wasn't that many confirmed fixes on identity fix in regards to it, but um, it's, this is a standard automatic transmission, meaning that it, it has gears. It's not a um, CVT. Strangely, um, the CVT, because I was trying to figure out if it was CVT or not, because it says ATF on the dipstick, but the service data and identity fix, the picture displays that the CVT transmission will have a dipstick um, and alternatively the regular uh, transmission the automatic transmission will just have uh, field ports a drain and a field port type of transmission no dipstick yes, it, it takes the DW1 fluid I have, I have to make sure because I know Honda had like a Z something Z1 or something like that but the DW1 is a type of fluid that go in this transmission so what it is, this transmission works totally good when you drive it under low conditions, but as soon as you start to cruise, it, sh it, it shrimbles, it shakes. Like there's a misfire. First thing I thought of, oh, this is, a, this is an arcing problem. I'm talking to myself while I'm driving this car, and I'm like, you know what, let me go pull some information. I looked up the misfire graph data pit in, in uh, long-term short-term fuel trim, and um, lo and behold, no misfire discrepancies. So there wasn't any type of uh, hesitation with the engine. And again, even under um, load, it works fine. It runs great. When you do snap throttles, it works fine. It's just that when you're cruising, it does it. And that's the discerning difference between an uh, arcing issue versus um, something transmission related. Uh, low RPM high loads will cause misfires and you'll you'll see that reflected in, in the, in the uh, live data Honda's really good for showing misfire information with um, in regards to, to cylinder misfires in the pit data they're really good for that um, but unfortunately as far as the transmission issue that we got going on now we have no check engine lights no codes and um, I'm just gonna try to look at some shift solenoids um, and um, maybe I can look at the uh, lockup control solenoid and hopefully I am going to look at the temperature because I want to see what's going to be the difference between the before and after after uh, changing the fluid because I am going to drain the fluid and see if there's any ferrous metals or uh, clutch material, anything metal in there. See how the magnet looks. I'm gonna drain it and refill it uh, twice. So I'm not gonna do it once. I'm gonna drain it, do it once, drive it around, see if there's any changes. And if I feel comfortable enough, like it potentially could be a fix or a, 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 a remedy for it, I will do it again. So two drain and refills is what's gonna happen today. But one, it's just going to happen just to do an inspection, strain the fluid, and see if there's any metal in it. I'm almost black. I can't get my words out. I'm almost back at my place now. There's quite a few hills around here, so 
I want to show you exactly what I'm experiencing. I got about 20% throttle going up a slight hill. That's it right there. give it gas it clears up but you can still feel it kind of like in and out it's like a slight harsh downshift I'll apply the throttle again So there's a sweet spot right there to where it does it at its worst. I'm gonna let it get too bad. Slight harsh downshift right there. I'm back in my spot now. Now the only other thing it has, the only other issue it has is it has a, a slight harsh engagement. So if I put it in neutral and then reverse, you can feel it. So I can understand why they assume it to be motor mounts, but I mean even then bad motor mounts wouldn't have like harsh engagements like this unless there were some issues with um, transitioning the gear you know so we, I shouldn't be feeling that this is this is all transmission so I'm let's 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 talk when I got here and within that I think we should take into consideration that being that there's no check engine light code so there's no no uh, out of tolerances specifications for what the PCM is detecting normally if there was a fault something was out of specification like an incorrect gear ratio, the, car, the vehicle would have been intelligent enough to pick that up, especially something that's new, I hope. Um, so, I mean, I, one pit that I wish that was available was um, uh, pressures. So we have a pressure switch, but we don't have an actual pressure sensing, like a pressure transducer. So it would be nice if we had something along the lines of that, that we can actually see if there's any uh, discrepancies with the pressures with the current transmission fluid that's in there. So this is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to show, I know I contradict myself a lot, but I'm going to, I'm going to show the uh, fluid, uh, the, the, con the condition of the fluid, not as far as the whole repair because this is very cut and dry. Um, you don't have to feel the transmission through where the dipstick is right there. You have a fill port right here between these lines, if I can get right down there, right there where that blue, that blue paint is, like a 17, I wanna say a 19 millimeter, like socket should fit on there, we'll find out, but that, that's where you'll fill it. Uh, there's a drain plug on the bottom of it, and I'll show that when I hop under there, and um, we'll just see what the condition of the fluid looks like when I'm draining. I got a paint strainer, so I'll be able to strain out any metal particulates when it's uh, getting um, when it's filling up a container so let me get to see if I can get it high enough and get an empty container so I'll be able to catch all type of metal materials and uh, get a visual of what that looks like These 
knuckle busters. Yep. And that drain plug's hot. So here's the drain plug here. This is what we got for that. I, mean, I don't see nothing too out of the ordinary. This looks honestly normal, but I guess what we see with the strainer this is going to be the determiner of what's going on inside this transmission. I mean, for something that never been changed before, this blue it hasn't been serviced, and it's a hundred and I want to say thirty thousand miles. You know, this isn't. This isn't crazy bad, but like I said, we're gonna we're gonna look take a look at that strainer. Here's the strain fluid here, and uh, there isn't there isn't any metal in there. I mean, everything looks fine. I mean, it was low. Well, I understand I was supposed to be able to pull out three quarts, and it's only I want to say one about that. Yeah, here you go, right here. So we got uh, one quart, about one and a half quarts that came out. So it's a possibility that this fluid was just low. I don't know, man. But it uh, normally I get a little bit more than that when it, when it comes out. And plus the dipstick didn't really show any fluid. So this might be fixed from just putting fresh fluid in it. Let's find out. So I was wrong about the field plug. It is a 17 millimeter. I don't know if I say it's 19 or 9. Um, I got the Valvoline Max Life. This is just a full synthetic multi vehicle. It is full compatible with the Z1 transmissions. However, uh, this is the DW1 that it's supposed to take. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to use a multi vehicle fluid, which isn't like bad, but you know, I wish it was more detailed as to why um, the DW1 is specified with this vehicle versus the Z1 fluid. So I'm going to use the multi-vehicle, multi-import full synthetic by Vaveline, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. I do have to change the engine oil, and being that, from what I understand, is typically three quarts that come out here when I remove the drain plug, and being that I might have to fill it again, I'm just going to pour this whole 3.8, 3.8 uh, liters in here, and um, you know whatever's. If it's too high, I'll pull it out, but it, the dipstick was really low. So I'm pretty sure this will work out just fine. And like I said, I did have intentions on draining and refilling it twice. So we'll see what happened with this one. I don't mind taking out some, um, especially being it was crazy low. So I'm going to check the dipstick once I get it idled. I do have to change the engine oil, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And uh, take it on this test drive and see if things are corrected. The fluid's not out. I just got to reset the uh, service light here. Let's see, turn the car off, back on. And now uh, I'm just going to hold the reset button until the numbers beside the service, one, two, three numbers right there, start, uh, start flashing. Let off of it, two, three. Hold it again and it should reset. There it go. Cool. Alright, let's see what happens. I do have oil in there. I have never screwed that up before. But um, I'm going to put it in neutral. Let's 
see what it does. I'll put it in drive. Put it back in reverse. Neutral. And it still has a little bit of the same engagement here. I'm going to um, put some miles on it, go around my three mile loop and see if it does anything and I'll update shortly. Alright, so I got my first four miles, I got five miles almost, and I'm, I, I can't even get to tell you this issue is like pretty much resolved. Right now I'm at the sweet spot where it'll normally start, start to judder and, it's, and it was kind of like a in and out wavy type uh, feel, like a sensation. But now it's, it's not even doing it at all. So this was the actual fix here. I'm gonna see if I can give it a little more load. And it slowly started to subside. Like it, you would feel, you would experience somewhat of what it was doing before, the harsh shutter. And then it just slowly just, just subsided. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna head to the parts store to get my other gallon of fluid and do my second flush and uh, that should have cured an entire issue and I can't so like I'm feeling I'm feeling something but it's nowhere near what I was feeling before nowhere near it. so uh, over time I mean this, he should be totally satisfied with the repair I'm I, I even notice a huge difference so let me do my second flush and um, I'll update All right, so as I'm driving I'm just just pondering on what could have potentially caused this issue and this is just my theory, um, but I'm thinking the clutch materials, clutch material, can, once it contaminate the fluid, and because of the harsh engagement, this this car doesn't have a soft engagement. That's why these transmissions are just so damn reliable. Unlike the Chevy, uh, where it'll, it'll kind of like slip, and that friction uh, over time would just prematurely wear out the clutches. These have a harsher engagement, and I'm and I'm pretty sure since it's just so instant instead of progressive, the um, once it disengages to transition into another gear, maybe the fluid becomes tacky, or the voids or the clearance is so tight that uh, and uh, with the tolerances that it 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 continues to grasp. In transitioning to the other gear so while it's transitioning releasing the clutch packs to transition into another gear that clutch has not fully disengaged and this is just my assumption you know I don't I don't rebuild transmission but it's just the from some of the symptoms of uh, transmissions and how fluids can put in the incorrect fluid can cause issues that's the only logical explanation I have with in regards to this issue and why the fluid change actually worked. So if putting fresh fluid in like the Chevys, the 4060s will cause it to slip, it's, ch it's, it's chattering under the conditions we experience. We just need more slippage. So the fresh fluid will fix it. So I guess it's this these symptoms are unique in which the rare cases of changing the fluid will actually resolve issues. So. This is this is nice. This is rare. This is extremely rare. But it makes sense. I mean, there was no contaminations in the fluid, like no metal, no uh, clutch material, which was great. So it had to have been some other um, issue. There was no check engine light. Um, so yeah, I think we're. This is this is nice. This is nice. Everything's working out great. A fluid service on the transmission actually fixed it. No flushing, just a drain and refill. Everything's done with the car. Everything's working great. Uh, it works even better with the other fluid change. So if you're ever having any, any issues with that juddering, that shudder, that, that shaking in the, in the cabin at a load, low RPM, moderate load, then uh, it's good to go ahead and check the and check and change the transmission fluid. Again, this fluid was low but uh, it was a good idea to go ahead and change it because of the contaminants on the magnet. And again, my theory as far as what I think is prob what probably happened uh, is if, you know, because of the contaminants, the disengaging and engaging of the uh, clutches, it's just a theory. I mean, I, I'm, I probably could be wrong, but there is an update 
on the uh, shifting parameters with this vehicle. Hopefully to help this car. I'm going to let the customer know about the updates because I can't do updates unfortunately. And uh, it's a potential that it, it could 100% correct the issue. But being that is, I will say 90% cured. You won't feel it. You won't even know that it's having some issues. It feels like a CVT transmission progressing in, uh, in speed. Okay, so then it's infinite gear ratio is it's like progressing. You feel that 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 wavy jerking sensation as you um, progress in the speed with the CVT. It's somewhat similar to that now uh, versus the chatter you witnessed while I was uh, driving the vehicle. So other than that, I mean, I do know the fluid was supposed to be. Uh, DW1 but I got the Z1 fluid in here for the other Acuras uh, this should work out perfectly fine um, I can't imagine the, sh the fluid being totally different to the point where it's going to call the transmission to fail this looks very similar to the BA whatever the BX it's, it's a Honda, it's an Acura I, I can't imagine it has a nice harsh engagement just like the other ones and if I look at fluids of, of abrasiveness bearing abrasiveness I mean, I can't imagine it's being harmful, so we'll see. But it fixed the problem, so I'm not worried about it. Fix it 90%. It's not 100%. So, but um, but the customer's going to know. He's going to notice a huge difference in it. So I'm good. I know it's good. I'm pretty sure he's going to be totally satisfied. And I wish um, Firestone would have took a little bit more time to assess this situation, and you know maybe they would have been a lot more precise. But just like the yesterday's situation, I did what I was requested and it was kind of like a dilemma on my part. Well, let me do this and see if they're right. But I've known I've got more than one or two or a handful of cars from... Oh, my power just went out. It's funny, my neighbor just sent me a message on Facebook talking about it. Shit. Anyway, don't worry, I pay my bills for Sunday too. <laughs> and too, there was an accident up the road, so yeah. Um. Anyway, I digress. So, um... I'm, I'm like messed up my powers out <laughs> um, but we'll see how long this uh, transmission hold up with the current fluid that's in there um, I can't imagine it having any problem everything went smooth yesterday with the replacement but it felt like I was just working aimless which I was and again it's not like the first or the last time I'm going to get vehicles from Firestone because I'm pretty sure they're in to make money uh, just to try to upsell people and what what is the client going to say? You know when they're wrong. They're a conglomerate. They're a large company. You know, take me to court. So, but anyway, uh, I'm going to have to keep starting over again and digressing because I'm forgetting what I'm saying. The power's out and my phone keeps shutting down. No fan. The fan is not even working. It's like 100 degrees in here. But look, if anything happened, I will update the description. Otherwise, hit that link. Subscribe to the channel, stay informed, have that reassurance of my work. See you on the next one.